What is it even like to see an instrumental band live? Asked a colleague of mine who I sometimes use in these videos as a narrative prop because I tell him all of the things I do, whether he cares or not, and it's definitely the latter. I had just offered him a pair of free tickets to a concert because the folks who were supposed to join me had had to duck out at the last minute. He checked the group out on Spotify and dug what he had heard, but ultimately declined for reasons that don't matter, but definitely feel like a personal slight. Still, he was nonetheless curious about the experience, and rather than simply explain it, I decided to make a YouTube video that he can also watch if he is so inclined, which I'm sure he won't be. Hello, by the way, and welcome to the Week Air Review. You can call me fine. It's, it's fine. I, I don't even care. <laughs> and today, I am talking about God is an Astronaut. I first saw the band on September 17th, 2016, which I know because it was the same night a pressure cooker exploded in Chelsea in Manhattan, just a few blocks away from the Highline Ballroom, RIP, where the concert was taking place. I came out of the venue with my friends and noticed how quiet it was. Reaching the next avenue, we saw the blue and red of police lights just a few blocks up. Not particularly shaken, but rarely passing up the opportunity for gelato, we went to Amarino to process that and also talk about the show. Three years later, God is an Astronaut returned, this time to the Music Hall of Williamsburg in Brooklyn, a venue that I think is one of the better sounding in New York. So, of course, I was there again. I was supposed to go with that group, but as I said, it didn't work out. God as an Astronaut was preceded by the American Dollar, a post-rock duo from Queens that was honestly totally awesome and really set the mood. Post-rock, for those who don't know, like me before I started writing this video, is an experimental, typically instrumental genre that focuses on texture over structure. It's about the feeling that the music makes, no matter what rules must be broken to get there. The American Dollar sees one person on drums and keys, and the other on guitar and also keys. A backing track fills in the gaps. The best word to describe it is ambient, which is clearly a goal since they append that to the name of a number of their tracks on Spotify. It's the kind of music that I would accompany the occasional vlog segments on this channel with. Their live experience? starts to get at the answer to my colleague's question, because it is radically different from the recording. Of course, it is hard to be totally low-key in the way they are in studio when there's a drum set on stage, unless it's being blocked by a sound shield or something, because drums are loud, and when you put them at the front of the stage, they have a tendency to take over. And here, they act as a driving force in songs that the studio versions don't really have. But even still, it is about the feeling that gets evoked rather than bopping along to the beat. But there's two kinds of feelings at play here, emotional and physical. Years ago, I was with my dad going to see my sister do something sports related. I made God as an Astronaut the trip's soundtrack. Not too long after, my dad told me he was going to Boston to see the band perform, and afterwards called me to gush about the way you feel the bass thumping in your chest, and it literally vibrates your bones and grabs you so deeply into what you're hearing as to make you a genuine part of the sound. If you've got a good sound system and don't live in an apartment, you can approximate this somewhat at home, but really, it can't compare to a full-on concert venue with quality acoustics. Though they sometimes tread there, I wouldn't call God as an astronaut in general ambient, nor do I think that their music fits seamlessly into the background of any situation. It's melancholic, not so soul-crushing that you couldn't have it as a background to a pleasant drive across a bridge, but not necessarily a great choice for your next party, unless you're into that kind of party, which, like, you do you. Take, for example, the first song of theirs I ever heard, the title track for their 2005 album All Is Violent, All Is Bright, which I think is a pretty great intro to the band's sound. <laughs> A 
Although post-rock isn't super structural by design, this follows a pattern that many God is an Astronaut songs do, especially from the early years, a free-flowing, ambient-adjacent intro that ultimately turns to a 10-ish second-long musical riff that follows through the song, typically done on guitar but occasionally keys, as with that album's closer, When Everything Dies. people like me something to hum along to, which matters because I want to be as externally irritating as possible when I listen to music. And if you jump ahead to a few minutes later, you'll find that things have ramped up significantly, emphasizing additional instruments and sounds over the course while still holding on to that basic tune. <laughs> In the years since, their songs have become much more layered and elaborate. Longer, too, but you can still often hear this basic structure in their work. Each album represents what they consider to be a snapshot of where they are in the moment that it's written, and you can often get a sense of how things were by the names alone. Other tracks from All Is Violent, All Is Bright include Forever Lost, A Deafening Distance, and Suicide by Star. Not everything is quite so on the nose. 2015's Helios Erebus is named for Greek gods, for example, and it is hard to know what exactly that album's track Pig Powder is referring to, since I can't imagine it's the barbecue dry rub. But they felt the song titles matched the mood of the music. And Pig Powder feels right for the clashing of guitars that verges on being actively unpleasant to listen to, but never quite crosses that line. Their latest release, last year's Epitaph, is so named because it was written in the wake of guy who does all of the talking at the show, Torsten Kinsella's six-year-old cousin passing, putting the pain into music. And right from the very first notes, you can tell. The title track is slow, building up over seven and a half minutes to a depressed in multiple senses of that word intensity that showcases a very different kind of instrument, a voice. And of course, a voice is an instrument, and an incredibly versatile one at that, but the use here, and generally throughout their music, is as instrument only, conveying emotion rather than language. When Kinsella comes to the mic, he is not speaking, but sounding. Until I saw them that first time, I didn't actually realize that these sounds were vocals. Kinsella's voice is higher pitched than I expected, and it results in an almost choral sound, despite coming from a single person. The way it floats among the instruments verges on ethereal, even haunting. Honestly, words would be superfluous. I should note here that it's not always instrumental. A number of the songs on their 2013 album Origins, for example, do have lyrics. Not a lot of lyrics, uh, typically just a few repeated phrases that are honestly difficult to discern unless you look them up, but they're there. And pretty much all of them are about loneliness, so I guess that's where they were at the time. Relatable. To really get the fullness of the experience, I actually removed a part of myself from it by closing my eyes. Suddenly, the crowd around me vanished, the drunk kid grinding his girlfriend clearly unaware of what music he was listening to was thankfully gone. It was just me and the music. Which is where the venue matters, because the Music Hall of Williamsburg really does sound great, and this is particularly apparent with their kind of expansive music. God is an Astronaut creates a soundscape, putting instrumental anywhere and everywhere your ears may point. So when you close your eyes, it becomes the only thing there, and it is all around. And it's not just hearing, you feel it too. The reverberations in your chest physically move you, pulling you further into the possibly literal but definitely metaphorical darkness from which their music comes. But again, 
it's not something that you should avoid while considering how much Advil you need to help your headache. I pull up God as an astronaut at work, on a nice walk through a park, or when I'm just lounging in my living room. It is a go-to when I am looking for something to fill a void. And maybe that says something not so great about me and my general mental state, but the music just fits. 8.2 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you particularly to my patrons, my mom, Hammer and Marco, Kat Saracata, Benjamin Schiff, Anthony Cole, and at Blasian FMA. If you like this video, that's great. If not, I'm sorry. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. I hope to see you next week.